Hey, what's up guys? I'm over here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 22 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 21 today for the Brazilian Grand Prix in season one. This is the penultimate episode of the entire season. It's uh, been quite a whirlwind. We've flown through this first season, it seemed like, with the daily uploads. But we're here, the second last race, the race which will set up a potential championship decided between Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc. Just just like we've seen in real life, but it's been a lot closer than it has been in real life, to be honest. Um, but last episode did change things. Verstappen was able to get some more points over Leclerc, so this race is crucial. Leclerc needs to beat Verstappen in this race to really give himself a good, proper chance of actually, you know, potentially getting the title in his first ever uh, Drivers' Championship in his career. And there's still plenty of fighting in the constructors with Ferrari feeling a bit of pressure from Mercedes potentially and obviously our fight with McLaren for P7 in the constructors last episode didn't help obviously in that fight if you did watch it um it was I mean quite an exceptional race up until our engine exploded and one of the components failed and obviously how the first half of a race goes and the potential that was there doesn't count to anything in terms of points and tangible rewards so yeah um McLaren were able to get some over us and they are now four points ahead of us four points it is doable but you gotta th I think Sao Paulo this race I reckon McLaren would be quicker than us Abu Dhabi, I think we could pull it back a little bit. That kind of circuit, I feel, will suit our car and just suit me maybe better because historically the AI have been very consistent around Brazil. They're very tough to beat. The traction they pull through the first two turns out the center S is insane. So if I had to hedge my bets, I think we'd be looking at getting more points over McLaren in, in Abu Dhabi in the finale. Uh, into this episode then, though, we have a bit of bad and good news. We, well, good news is our rear downforce upgrade came in. Bad news, the front downforce upgrade failed. And we have to repurchase that. That will come in in time for Abu Dhabi at least. So we'll finish off with those two things in balance. But a bit annoying that that one failed just before Brazil. Would have been nice to have the front end downforce kicking in. But I guess the rear one will take it. We'll take it. And another little booster from Red Bull Powertrains is a fuel upgrade to our car. Which comes for free from my engine supplier. This is the last upgrade supplied by Red Bull to our engine. I assume it's also an upgrade the, the, the factory team and Alpha Tauri will get. So, you know, clearly pushing hard to maintain the performance Verstappen's had and try and give Verstappen the easiest uh, finale rather than the hard one if Leclerc pulls some points over him. And Red Bull, going into this episode, actually lead now as the best team on paper for the first time ever in the season. Season. And to say that Verstappen already has an advantage points-wise going into this episode, that's really good news for Max. It's not so much for Leclerc as Ferrari are just, just underneath. It is very, very tight though. And you can see for us, we are actually now ahead of Haas and Alfa Romeo. And that's included the front downforce upgrade that failed. So with that, we'll be even further ahead of Haas and Alfa at Abu Dhabi. So I, I, I said it last episode, I think, but we could end the season in a position where I thought we'd be aiming for at the beginning of Season 2, not the end of Season 1. This is amazing. So on paper, we're actually apparently the sixth best team on the grid. So like we've said many times before, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a long grind at the start of the game, but then you get to a point where you start snowballing. And I think also, to be fair, other teams around us, they're maybe saving R&D to adapt for the regulation changes themselves. We already did that earlier in the season. So now we can make the gains that maybe they were making around those kind of Grand Prix where, you know, we were actively saving R&D, you know, around Japan just before the Japanese Grand Prix. Um, so it kind of all balances out. But that will make season two very interesting to see who makes the best of the regulation changes, who keeps the performances. Um, but, you know, if you look at that chart, things are so close. So this qualifying is going to be mighty fine. And that should set us up for an amazing season two, really, with things being so close. Uh, but the regulation, regulation change, to be fair, might blow that open. We'll see. We'll see. But second run then in Q1. And that will get us through 
into this second part of qualifying. Myself and Drogovic quite fairly matched there, only one tenth in it. Uh, Hamilton and Mercedes looking strong again, but both Verstappen and Leclerc up there in the top four. But And it's very fine, actually. Very, very close stuff between uh, Hamilton to Russell. Then there was quite a big gap to Leclerc. So something has gone wrong a little bit with the glitch times. And I'm only noticing now, McLaren, with that whatever has happened in quali, McLaren, they're both knocked down Q1. Norris and Ricardo. So there's clearly something's gone on with the, the simulation of these quality times as you went to the end of the session and loaded into the results screen because the rest of us were 1.1 behind the top three. But it also means it works in our favour because our rivals, McLaren, they're knocked out. So that is amazing. And this circuit's hard to overtake at, you know. And there is some rain forecast for Sunday as well. So... This could be a monumental moment for us to ease the pressure in the fight versus the Papaya team. What won't be great though for us is again, we're knocked out of Q2 and our teammate is able to get through into the top 10 shootout. I just lack some pace out there. I don't know where on earth Drogovic found those extra tenths. But we were now, what was it, six tenths behind him uh, in this quality session. So I, I, I have a feeling, I don't know, just off the back of that Q1, some of these quality times are a bit glitchy and a bit, you know, the simulation's breaking a bit when it goes to re uh, loading in the results screen. But, uh, I mean, I'll take it. You've got to remember, this race, by the way, is a sprint weekend. So we've only had one practice session and then we've gone into quality. So this is now the grid for the sprint race, which will obviously form the grid for Sunday's proper Grand Prix. So from P13, we can make positions up and we can set ourselves up for a better race on the Sunday. But definitely, I would say, a bit of a funny qualifying. Um, definitely some funny business going on with some of the times that were shown in Q1. But after qualifying then, we have FP2 on the Saturday. Before the sprint race, we get enough R&D points to buy a, another major engine upgrade to our air energy recovery system. So that's going to be a huge one, but that will come in after Abu Dhabi. So that will be technically our first upgrade then for the win to break. But yeah, it's uh, you know, qualifying's done. It's now time for the race, the sprint race, on the Saturday. <laughs> Welcome to today's sprint. This is shaping up to be another fantastic weekend. A chance to maybe jump ourselves up the order. We start in P13. Of course, if there are any grid penalties, they get applied for Sunday's race. So we do indeed start from where we qualified on the Friday on this sprint weekend. And uh, well, what we do in this race is going to set us up for Sunday. So we can try and match Drogovic and uh, join him up there in the top 10. And we'll see if Leclerc can do anything to try and go up against Verstappen. Because Verstappen did out-qualify Leclerc for this grid. You can see on the minimap, it is a checkerboard of Mercedes and Red Bull in the top four. With the Ferraris lacking a bit of pace as we go to five red lights. And we're underway for the sprint around Sao Paulo. It's an okay start for us. There's a lot of cars going everywhere to turn one. Leclerc sends it down the inside. I'm seeing in the distance there. As we just try and survive and go around the outside of Pierre Gasly. Didn't want to kind of dive my nose in any further. Because that would have definitely uh, ended up in some sort of incident. And actually on the exit, we get a horrendous launch off the center S. Just the heavy fuel upsetting the rear end of the car. Gasly down the inside. We're on the outside of Magnussen. And me and Gasly are just using every inch of the circuit, it would seem, to race each other. Giving me kind of Silverstone vibes. Just me and him too focused on racing each other. We kind of ping pong Magnussen about and uh, go again for the charge down the inside. So really going hammering Dong and leaving nothing on the table there with Pierre Gasly up into the top 10 though ahead of us I can see in the minimap Leclerc has jumped one of the Red Bulls but I don't think it's the Red Bull he needs I think Verstappen at the moment is still ahead in second place Hamilton in first and then Leclerc in third then it's uh, George Russell Sergio Perez Alonso Carlos Sainz Drogovic Ocon and then myself as you can see but I'm hoping can we do anything to change this order again like Mexico stuck behind Ocon we're gonna try and change that can we go down the inside it's a late move and Ocon chops us off and says no thank you so it's a stern bit of defense to be fair fair play to him for blocking that off as uh, we have to wait again patiently the difference is though our teammates ahead of him so could be holding him up somewhat in the next lap or two and hoping backing him up into us because 
Clearly, we don't have the out-and-out pace of the Alpine as there's a big gap from Drogovic to the next car, which is that Ferrari trying to make up places of uh, Carlos Sainz. Ocon, a bit slow here. Can we get him into turn one? No. Instead, Ocon himself makes a dive bomb on Drogovic. What a move there, or nearly a half move. Brockon as uh, he really went for it to turn one. I, I tried to overtake him and he, he instead thought, no, I'm going to make an overtake myself. And now he will try and finish off the drog. Drogovic tries to defend on the outside. It's very close on the exit, but down the crest, Ocon gets it, Drogovic gets squeezed away and he's a bit la uh, wayward with his car control as we are now trying to go down the inside, a little bit of awkward touching between ourselves as Drogovic doesn't make it easy, you know, as, as you know, I've been a good teammate to him this season and he's really made that a lot more difficult than he needed to, but it's fine and now we have some great great wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing with Esteban Ocon squeezing through on the inside and then we tried to do our teammate a favor again even though he squeezed us out uh, we tried to hold up Ocon a bit to help him out but in the end we just had to settle to try and pull away and keep Ocon at bay he keeps us honest through that in the entire sprint but that is it then for the sprint action wasn't too much actually so Sao Paulo failed to be as exciting as Austria was. Lewis Hamilton ended up winning that sprint race from Verstappen in second place, Leclerc in third. So Verstappen gains one more point on Leclerc in this championship fight. So this is it then. Tomorrow's race, Sunday, Leclerc has to try and get Verstappen off the line and finish ahead of him to give himself any kind of proper good chance of this championship. Because if Verstappen was to finish ahead, I think you would say Verstappen gets one hand on the trophy. For us, we set ourselves up in a pretty good position. P8 on the grid for tomorrow's race. Felipe in P10. We'll take that and we'll see what we can do. And both McLarens hardly made up any position. So that's fantastic on the constructors fight front. Let's go to the grid. Formula One returns to Interlagos once again with the stage set for what promises to be another classic Sao Paulo Grand Prix. Sebastian Vettel famously clinched his third championship here in 2012 and in 2016 Max Verstappen treated us all to one of the finest wet weather drives of all time. Interlagos, always a very special race here in Brazil, is a 2.7 mile circuit with nine lefts and six rights for a total of 15 corners. The fastest lap today should have an average speed of around 135 miles per hour if of course the weather stays dry until the end of the Grand Prix. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Hamilton, they've taken a grid penalty. Carlos Sainz, the owner driver. Russell, Gasly, Mick Schumacher and Lando Norris. Fernando Alonso, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Vettel, Kevin Magnussen and Sonoda, Ocon, Joe, Nicholas Latifi and Daniel Ricciardo, Albert, Drogovic, Bottas, and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box and it's fantastic to have you here with us today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. Well, with grid penalties being applied, we start from P6 on this Sunday's race. And with penalties for the Mercedes guys, quite nicely, this race now is fronted by Leclerc and Verstappen on the front row. So this gives Leclerc a great chance of jumping Max into turn one and then controlling the race from there. For us, well, our, our, it, life's harder for Drogovic because he's been pushed down the order, but we have a good chance of scoring good points today. There is rain on the way though. It's nice and sunny right now, but we've even got maybe indication of full wet weather later on. So this could be a very tricky one to navigate, especially because I've set this car up for dry conditions as well, which means I've taken some wing off to help the straight line issue. So 
I don't know. I'm a little bit worried at what our performance could be in the full wet at the end of this one. But I guess we'll just kind of cross that bridge once we get to it. But it's not an exactly amazing start to the race because I overshoot my pit box and get pushed back to the furthest location I can do in my grid spot. But we'll make the most of it as the back of the grid forms. And we get going nearly now for the second last race in the season to set up the very first ever season finale on F122 My Team Career Mode. We go to five red lights to the Brazil. Brazilian Grand Prix lights out and away we go from P6 on the grid. It's a cracking start for us and even with the further back launch we get Carlos Sainz into turn one and Leclerc will get Verstappen into turn one. The two championship rivals neck and neck and the Ferrari is passed. Verstappen is down to P2. Hamilton's been squeezed off by Perez and myself and Sainz who are still squabbling off the center S now have a chance as Hamilton is slow and has been a bit flush busted by Perez squeezing him out and we just sent it down the inside of the P4 but I don't think this will last long we are in a much slower car and this is not really our fight today and sooner rather than later Carlos Sainz will fly by we're not going to fight that too much because he is in a Ferrari he is in a car that's leading the race right now and uh, I know the fight is not with him today it's not with Hamilton either Gasly maybe so but Hamilton even him I'm not going to fight too much bit of ERS usage off the center S but really now just waiting for him to fly by us because if we just fight him we're just going to lose too much time in our own race in the grand scheme of things Gasly though I will fight him and Russell well he's stuck behind Gasly so as long as I keep Gasly at bay that's good enough for me but that's going to be easier said than done lap eight then quite a few laps later but Pierre is making a move as the clouds have come over the rain is on the way later but Gasly just like the sprint race is taking the fight to us the Alpha Tauri seeming pretty good maybe with that Red Bull powertrain upgrade we all received as we now side by side we squeeze him out up the hill but he gave it a good go Russell though now into P7 and unfortunately now that Russell's overtaken him I feel like he is going to overtake us pretty soon right now though we're watching his teammate Hamilton looking to make a move on signs up into P4 the two Mercedes cars push back down the order with grid penalties Hamilton making a beautiful move on the outside of a Ferrari signs though I think reporting some issues Issues, mechanical issues with his car so slow down a bit versus his teammate Leclerc in terms of the pure pace the Ferrari should be showing but he's given a real good fight to Hamilton as this fight continues into the next lap they've been fighting now for almost half a lap this will be as Hamilton continues to be side by side trying to make the outside move eventually on the inside up the hill gets the move finally booked in into P4 and can chase after Perez Verstappen P2 still half a second behind Leclerc but Leclerc so Soaking up the pressure and doing what he needs to do right now in first place. Meanwhile, back to our race then. Lap 13. So the first stint, not a lot's been happening. We've just been trying to keep the cars behind us at bay. Which includes Gasly, who got re, re overtook Russell, as you can see. And is back to fight us again into this turn. I, I actually missed when he re overtook Russell. But he's done very well then to get Russell. Because I don't think Russell has an issue or anything like that. He just purely just re overtook him with DRS, I think. So it's... It's that kind of case like we saw in Japan where when you've got a car ahead of a, a quicker one, the AI, A on AI, sometimes it's hard to make the overtake. So Gasly's doing us a favor by keeping Russell at bay because as soon as he gets past, he's going to overtake us. And that's pretty much what's going to happen now on lap 15 is the rain is falling further, further and further. The track very slippery and we go a little bit wide and on the exit down the crest, Russell's going to fly by. We won't fight it too much because we're not in the fight with him really that much. And uh, we are going to settle in for P7. This is now where we should be minimum in this race, I think. We're, you know, we're almost halfway through the race. The rain is falling, though. That's a bit worrying because, as I said, I've set the car up for dry, which is lower wings. So I don't really know what our wings are going to be saying and how they're going to perform once it's fully time for the intermediates and the full wets, even more so. It's already pretty slippery, though, so it may be time for into soon. We've gone a bit wide, slow. Gasly on the outside runs himself off the circuit, comes back on and makes contact with the McLaren and the front wing off. 
for the McLaren or severe damage. And that debris is enough for the FIA to call out the safety car. But Gasly there has actually done us a solid by crashing into the McLaren as he went off circuit and came back very dangerously. Uh, because now Lando's going to be pushed down the order. Ricardo though, is still lurking around. He's only like five positions lower. So he could still be a threat maybe for points today for that for fire team. But under the safety car, I reckon it's time to go to Inters. Even though it's still dry tyres now, I think by the time we come in uh, and go green again, it may be Inters weather. So I'm going to risk it a bit, roll the dice, and I'm going to come in for the intermediate tyres. I don't think anyone else is doing this. Everyone else is coming in for the dries. Even Lando just there with the front wing damage. He's pit onto hard. So the AI don't think it's time for Inters. I'm risking it. I roll the dice. It is a bit of a risk because you don't know with this game. Sometimes it can look wet, but it's still time for dries. But I'm just hoping, I'm hoping by the time we have to come in, the rain's going to be settling enough. For the Inters, and it will, even before we go to green, there's a load of cars in, including our teammate, and they are fitting the Inters in, Vettel's in, Ocon, Ricardo. so we've got half the grid that has come in, but then the second half, Magnus and Alonso, everyone above, they've not come in, and I think there's only one, one or two laps left for the safety goal, one lap left, even now, if they come in for a pit stop, we're going to jump quite a few of them, we will do, and so here we are in a very weird situation where Perez, signs Russell and Magnussen they've still not pit and it is definitely time for Inters because the rest of us are all on Inters and it's coming in this lap, so we are going to take the lead of this race then, because we're the highest car on Inters Leclerc and Verstappen, they're way down the order now, in the, in the thick of it so who even knows where they are we're going to have to update you on their situation but we now lead the Brazilian Grand Prix from Sebastian Vettel. Ricardo, though, is in P3. So again, like Mexico, we're in, in a situation where I didn't think we'd be fighting for a podium or a win or whatever. But we now have to try and stay in this kind of position because Ricardo is lurking in the background and could overtake us and jeopardize the P7 Constructors fight. But we are struggling for grip because of our lower wing setup. And here comes Sebastian Vettel. We go defensive to block him off but we compromise our line and Vettel goes down the inside for the switchback move the four time world champion leads the race in the Aston Martin Ricardo now is trying to overtake as we come back at him but we're now drifting through the corner because our setup and our car is just so horrendous this is giving me Australia vibes all over again the car just doesn't have enough downforce now for this uh, for this kind of situation because I've basically just set the car up far too extremely for the dry condition and now we're having to really fight hammering Tong and trying to squeeze Ricardo out right to the limit of what's fair really just to keep the second place but Vettel's already bolted he's two point seconds up the road and it's to be honest only a matter of time before these guys really press down upon me and maybe overtake me because I've just got no grip here but Vettel is looking supremely comfortable in first place now 2.1 the gap Ricardo's in though Ricardo's in oh did he get some damage in the fighting there mate Maybe. And Ricardo comes in for a pit stop. So drama everywhere. As now Verstappen's been overtaken by Hamilton. In down to P10. Leclerc is in P9. So at the moment he's ahead of Verstappen. But both of them are only going to score a couple of points today. Which will really kind of you know, lower the kind of impact I guess. Of one of them finishing ahead of the other. But we are just really struggling. As we go once again nearly wide. At that same corner. We're just struggling to get the nose turned in. And enough mid apex. Uh, grip basically and uh, now the Alpine of Ocon is really pressurizing us for second place Albon's there in P4 and up the hill on lap 23 Ocon on the inside of me I'm having to lift off midway through that corner just to make sure I don't spin and T-bone crash Ocon whilst we go side by side we squeeze him but he takes me wide and then Albon comes out of nowhere in the Williams to do the double overtake Albono with the double pass and we are just struggling. We are struggling. We are in pain right now. I've got no grip. Drogovic 
has now overtaken us. He's in P6. And we're now just getting absolutely flustered and die-bombed to hell by Hamilton, Leclerc, Verstappen maybe. I'm saying box in this lap because I think it might be time for the full wet. So I'm not even kidding. I'm, I'm losing so much grip. I think the rain's falling that hard that the AI, they've got some OP advantage right now because it's that crossover period from inters to wets. And we've talked about it before that on this year's game, the harder crossover to, to kind of, you know, sense is inter to wet, not inter to dry like it was in F1 2021. So I honestly think it's time for full wets. And that's why I'm struggling so much because I know I said I've got low wings, but, you know, it's a bit ridiculous that I've, I've, I've just lost. Uh, seven positions in one lap. Um, and yeah, there are a few mistakes in there, but it's just because I can't keep the car going in a straight line. Meanwhile, Vettel's 4.3 ahead. Albon in the Williams is in second place. Ocon in third. Leclerc up into P8. Verstappen P9. And we are going to come in for the full wet tyres. So, all right, this has been a roller coaster. It went from maybe fighting for a podium to now we're going to be in... Well, third last place, pitting for the full wet tyres. Second last place, even, on the full wets. Because, uh, yeah, I think... Oh, and we've got a mistake on the pit stop. Good. We had a mistake on the rear right, I think. That slowed down our pit stop time. And now we are indeed into last place of the race. So how the mighty have fallen. But it's because I think it's time for full wets. And unfortunately, the AI just were way too good in those conditions. They finally eventually come in, so we will regain some positions. Albon is now leading the race because he's continued on on Inters along with uh, Guan Yu Zhou, Sonoda, Leclerc, and Verstappen, the two chapter rivals, continue on on Inters. Lando the same, Alonso, Russell, Vettel though, the, the, the what he was the race leader, he has pit on to the full wet tyres. So using all his experience in Formula One, Vettel reckons it's time for the full wet. And as do I. Drogovic is on the full wet. And he's legitimately now ahead of me, by the way. And he's actually doing br pretty damn brilliantly. Because where he's going to filter out, I think he's going to be around P5 and 6. Once everyone comes in. Because Albon eventually, with 10 laps to go, will come in for the full wet. Along with everyone else, basically. Because, yeah, it's far too out there. There's no way those guys were continuing on the intermediate. Uh, but Leclerc and Verstappen now. They're going to be in together. And this is the battle of the pit stops here uh, for just the change onto the full wet tyres. Bit of a slow stop for the Ferrari and then held up in the pit lane and Verstappen's through. Oh, it's a bit controversial because really it was mostly the cars blocking the Ferrari team and uh, having to wait for the lolly lollipop man to kind of let him through or the system to let Leclerc through out the pit box. But Verstappen has jumped Leclerc in the pits then. They're going to come out in lower points positions but still that is crucial for Red Bull, crucial for Verstappen and a real blow for Leclerc and Ferrari because it's going to be so much harder in these conditions to try and make a move and overtake cars as it's so treacherous out there. It's so wet around Sao Paulo now. But Vettel does still now get back into the lead and Albon is still in P2 along with Ocon in the podium. So even though Albon and Ocon went longer inters, they still didn't lose enough time to be jumped by Hamilton, let's say. And Hamilton only managed to get the Alfa Romeo. So Vettel still leads by 5.7 seconds. So he, he's dominating this Brazilian Grand Prix now. So I'm actually, I'm feeling less embarrassed by being overtaken by Vettel so thoroughly and the others. Because you can see Vettel clearly has some insane pace right now versus the whole grid to have that kind of gap to Albon. As now Leclerc makes a move on Bottas as they're both him and Verstappen making their way through. Lando is, oh, oh my god! Lando Norris coming into the pit lane. He was still on Inters and he's crashed on his way into the pit stops. The Inters, they just basically did, couldn't clear the water and he's aquaplaned into the pit stop entry point. And so both McLarens are down in the bottom two positions. Ricardo just with that extra pit stop earlier. And Lando is now out of this race. And that calls out the full core safety car. Drama continuing to just enter and enter Sao Paulo in this race. Left, right and centre. So at the moment, the sit rep is, it's Vettel leading the way from Albon to Ocon. You've got Verstappen in P8, Leclerc P9. So Verstappen right now extending his championship lead by one more point there to Leclerc, or two points actually, uh, from two points to four points there for P8 and 9. And we've got ourselves just outside the top 10, but the safety car's now out. I was hoping that was going to bunch us up 
But as we go through to the next lap, lap 29, we are hit with that infamous safety car bug that we got back in Baku, if you remember, and they've still not patched it, which basically means everyone, every driver is driving to their Delta time, and so we're going to get stuck behind Bottas, and every gap under the safety car is going to remain the same. No one's going to bunch up for this restart. That is going to play into the hands of the likes of Sebastian Vettel, Albon, Ocon on the podium because they have got a healthy, they've got a 21 second gap to Hamilton. So this, I'm not even kidding, whatever order it's going to be, this will be your podium today. Vettel, Albon, Ocon because it's 16, 15 seconds to Hamilton. They're not going to, he's not going to bridge that. Grand new Joe in P5, Drogovic, Felipe Drogovic, our teammate, is still in P6 ahead of Sonoda and Verstappen and Leclerc will fight for P8 and 9 against Sonoda. P7, surely the Alpha Tauri weighs Verstappen by. Sonoda does give Verstappen a bit of a squeeze, you know, but eventually waves him by as the junior Red Bull team. So Verstappen up into P7 to extend even further on his championship potential following the checkered flag of this race. Can Leclerc now try and follow suit and overtake Sonoda just to keep the pressure up, to keep his hopes alive of his championship fight? versus the Dutchman. There he goes on the outside. Sonoda will fight this a lot harder on the inside. Oh, bit of contact made, but Leclerc does get the move done around the outside of the Japanese driver, but you can see the difference there. Yuki definitely made it a lot harder for Leclerc than he did with Verstappen. And oh, Leclerc's in. Leclerc's in. That that contact with Sonoda, that that got him damaged. His, his front wing's broken. It's, it's not fully off, but there's enough damage there with simulation damage that he has to change his front wing. That is it. Surely that is it. Mathematically, Leclerc will still be able to win the championship in Abu Dhabi. But realistically, Verstappen now has one hand on the championship trophy to do the back-to-back -back because of that blow. And he's only got himself to blame. He could have overtaken Sonoda one lap later to just keep it alive a bit more. Even if he lost two, three points to Verstappen today. That would have still been better than losing the whole amount of points he's going to lose now with that front wing damage. Yellow flags on that 34. And I think on the minimap, there was a pretty slow Ferrari. So I think that's Sainz who's having an issue with his engine. So uh, as we drift through the final bend and Alonso and Schumacher will filter through, we're just tumbling down the order. I mean, yeah, Gasly, go by, mate. Go by. We've got no pace. No pace. I, I, I am speechless. I have no, uh, no explanation for this lack of pace, ladies and gents. I'm not going to lie to you. I think it's just a combination of the AI being really good in the wet around here and the fact that I've got a setup that is not meant for the wet. The wings are far too low and I'm just tumbling down the order. So it's a good thing McLaren are on P21 and P22 because I'm not scoring points today. And you know what? After all of this... Drogovic is going to be the star man for our team today because he's going to get points for P7. But forget even about him because the man of the hour, the man of the episode is this man, the four-time world champion, Sebastian Vettel. He's turning back the clocks and he's going to be a winner once again in Formula 1 as he comes across the line to win the Brazilian Grand Prix in the place where he won his third Third World Championship, he wins in the Aston Martin. Alexander Albon, though, as well. Take a bow, son. Second place in the Williams. The worst car on the grid. Second place. Unreal. And Max Verstappen gets P5. Ocon on the podium. That's a really good result for him for the Alpine car. But Verstappen P5. Leclerc P20. Which pretty much means now, even though the man from Monaco mathematically can w still win the championship, Verstappen firmly has one hand on the championship going into Abu Dhabi, the final episode we finish up in P14, a day to forget in terms of that second half of the race. But it doesn't matter. Drogovic got us points as a team, so that's good news for us. We've witnessed some great battles around the historic curves of Interlagos today. And they've taken a fantastic win. And talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for them? Rain always has the potential to liven up a race and mix up the order, and they've taken full advantage of that to claim the victory today. It's always a bit of a lottery when the conditions are like this, but they've managed to stay on circuit and have come out on top.
see them on their way out to the podium now. Aston Martin really are making waves in this sport. And what a special race this was to see them earn the top spot. It must be said, it looks pretty damn good to see Sebastian Vettel back on the top step of a Formula 1 podium. He wins the Brazilian Grand Prix. Oh, what a podium. What a podium. Vettel, Albon, Ocon. Ocon, you know, Alpine's pretty damn good. But the fact that he's won the race in the Aston Martin and Albon has managed to stay put in second place in that Williams car is unreal. Unreal. And you know what? Also, Drogovic bigs up, big ups himself because he got some solid points today. P7 in his home race, remember? So he did his home fans really proud today. In, you know, uh, just, yeah, really great. Because he had some tremendous pace. You know, he was legitimately there. P7, fended off Guan Yu Zhou, fended off other cars in all the chaos. In a, in a scenario where I was just struggling, going backwards. So, kudos to him. And he, and, you know, his... P7 today and McLaren's implosion of the race with both of them being in the lower two positions means that in the constructors we are going into Abu Dhabi with a three point advantage so that's going to be needed because I reckon McLaren will be, be, be pretty good around there so the three points ahead of them that will be very useful and in terms of the drivers championship well as I said Leclerc mathematically could still win it but he's 20 points behind Verstappen now. So it is very much Verstappen's to lose. And the Dutchman will be very, very pleased and very, you know, confident he can make it back-to-back -back world championships in Abu Dhabi next time out. But guys, if you have enjoyed this one, the most chaotic Brazilian Grand Prix we've had in time with Sebastian Vettel winning, Albon on second place. If you have enjoyed it, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly formal on content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.